Good afternoon, everyone. We're uh, having a last Zoom speaker series, hopefully of 2021. I'd like to see everybody back in person. And I know we have some great locations for that. Uh, this is Kathy Pichulo with the Kenmore Town of Tonawanda Chamber of Commerce. And I'm very excited today because there's a lot that is going on in the town. And I swear that Jim Hartz wears three hats. And I think as he explains his direction and the things that he's working on right now, you'll actually see that he actually does wear three hats. So we're being joined by Jim Hartz, who's the Director of Community Development in the town of Tonawanda. And of course, we're in the state of New York. And Jim is going to be um, giving us some updates because there's a lot going on in the town. We've been working on a number of plans and for zoning and for all kinds of things. And it's just a, it's, it's just a constantly you know, moving um, situation with business development and trying to bring in businesses, et cetera. So uh, there's um, just a lot to talk about today. So I know that Jim has a, prepared a nice presentation for us to help uh, un help us understand a little bit about what he does in the three hats that he wears or four, there may be uh, more that comes. But uh, Jim, welcome, and I welcome everybody on the on the call here too. But I'll I'll turn it over to you to tell us a little bit. Um, I know you had kind of come up with a couple of um, topics that you want that'll kind of flush it all out. Uh, but basically, what is a town planner, and and what do you do? Is my first question. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, Kathy, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining the call today. Um, yeah, I've, I've been uh, the town planner for the uh, town of Tonawanda for, for about 12 years now. Um, and I, I don't know how I ended up following in the footsteps of the New York State Comptroller and the Erie County DA in the speaker series, but uh, here I am, your local town planner for, for the number three uh, speaker. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've been in the town for, for 12 years. And before that, I was with the town of Clarence as their assistant planner for 10 years. So it, it has been a privilege and an honor to serve in the public interest. Uh, one of the first things I remember in graduate planning school, well, one, one of my planning professors say, if you're here to make money, kid, uh, you might leave right now, there's the door. And uh, some days I really wonder about that decision to stay, but <laughs> anyway. Um, so what, is a, what does a town planner do? Our primary purpose would be to help establish a vision for the community through a collaborative and engaging process <clears throat> whereby interested citizens, business owners and elected leaders come together and participate in telling us how uh, they want to use our limited collective resources, be it our tax dollars and how we want to focus our, um, our policies and our priorities in, in a plan. And uh, here in the town of, town of Tonawanda, we're helping build a community that, of course, is a great place to live, work, and play. And that's, that's the uh, motto here at the town. So on a daily basis, we may be processing applications for uh, various developments or uh, conducting various state and federal uh, grant programs. But the primary mission does not really change. And that is um, constantly revisiting the goals and the objectives that have been agreed upon in our community and make sure that we're all on the right path with our priorities. We advise the elected officials on the various programs, the project proposals that come across our desk. So during this talk today, uh, I am gonna touch on the town's comprehensive plan. We're gonna take a look at what has been established as the collective vision for the community. And then we'll look at how this affects the, the business community as well. We'll look at uh, the local laws that govern development and some of the projects that are being proposed in town and what we're doing to bring those codes into the modern era. And finally today, I'll touch uh, briefly on another goal that's in the comprehensive plan that deals with the movement of people around from place to place in town using a, a mode other than a vehicle, also known as our Complete Streets Initiative. So, uh, We'll take a look at all these issues through the lens of why it's important for local businesses to stay engaged in the local community planning effort. So with that, I think I am gonna start sharing my screen cap. We're gonna see if this works. <clears throat> Hopefully this PowerPoint comes up or I'll be in some, some big trouble.
Okay, can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, great. So the town's comprehensive plan um, acts as the printed version of the agreed upon goals and objectives for the town. Uh, once it has been adopted by the town board, it holds great legal weight regarding future project proposals and programs that will be followed over the next 10 to 15 years. The town's last update was completed in 2015 and provides the framework necessary to guide future public investment in both programming and infrastructure and facility projects. It's also a, a guide for, for new policies regarding private investment in land use and zoning. So the vision of the town's future is embodied in the comprehensive plan. Uh, Section 272A of town law in New York State gives municipalities the power to plan for their future. The town's updated comp plan contains seven major goals and 154 implementation actions to be carried out in order to achieve the objectives in the plan. And our job is to keep the town on track and adjust when necessary. The comp plan requires the town to address a comprehensive zoning law rewrite, the complete streets plan and implementation and continued work on brownfield and neighborhood redevelopment. We embrace the walkable nature of our village and town and uh, build on its density and position in the region. Uh, here in Kenmore, Tonawanda, it's convenient to 15 to 20 minutes to anywhere you wanna go in Western New York. So what is the vision and how does it relate to some of the other plans in town? Currently, the, the focus, the primary focus uh, on the future of the town of Wanda has been focused around the waterfront area. Not that other areas of the town are being neglected, it's just that there's a transformation underway currently uh, guided by some other area plans such as the waterfront land use plan and the local waterfront revitalization plan. Both of these plans have been prepared to allow for more mixed use redevelopment and at the same time preserve the great manufacturing sector that accounts for a large portion of manufacturing jobs in our region. Provides thousands of jobs for families, not just in Tonawanda, but throughout Western New York. The issues that arise from any specific development or redevelopment location uh, lately has seems to boil down to brownfield issues of legacy contamination and the various state and federal programs available for cleanup. Tax credits, ECIDA tax incentive packages uh, provide some savings for, for sales tax and redevelopment and the town's 585 or 485 A and B programs give some relief for, for mixed use developments and investments uh, from local property taxes for a period of 10 years. So this slide um, uh, is of the former Tonawanda Coke site Kathy, can you see that slide? Great. Um, all, of, all of the programs uh, are designed to encourage investment in some largely ne neglected areas of town in the village of Kenmore. The New York State Brownfield program is still the best economic development program uh, available in New York State. And you, when you combine that with some of the other state and federal incentives, uh, that's how you can get a, a capital stack form for a development project that, that, that pencils out, that you can get these projects done. The new Riverview Innovation and Technology Campus redevelopment project is one example of work underway along our River Road corridor. They have already invested over $13 million in cleanup, and this work will be continuing for years. Uh, they've already removed about 8 million pounds of, of waste from the site and material off the site. And the stack demolition event uh, of uh, June 5th was, was, was quite the event. Um, so today we're going to focus on two of the implementation actions in the comprehensive plan, the, the zoning law rewrite and the complete streets initiative, uh, because these are taking up a bulk of our time in, in town government currently. And it matters to the business community because the, the comprehensive plan outlines how and why our tax dollars are going to be spent. Um, and the town is always looking to invest, um, partner and regulate the private land use realm. 
So there's a, there's a number of items that can affect private business depending on the nature of the work. But the town is looking out for how best to create that environment that is a great place to live, work, and play. Um, anyone that is uh, maybe interested in participating in the next comp plan update can join us in a few years. Uh, it does need to be updated and completed by 2025. And this will be a guide for development through the year um, 2040 at least. So if you can imagine that and think about where you might be in 2040, uh, there's certainly a lot of work uh, that needs to be done in, in town. So the, the town's existing zoning law is a patchwork of various consulting uh, work that has been done over time. And it's created a document that is oftentimes contrarian, has some double speak. Uh, there's various sections of the code that are out, outdated. Uh, some of these unintended consequences of this, this outdated language has caused a discriminatory effect in, in several protected classes of our population. Um, it doesn't address various issues that are relevant to everyday uses, such as uh, home occupations, the rise of home occupations, um, even fencing, uh, the new legalization of marijuana, which I know was a topic here uh, last month by the DA, and uh, things such as large-scale battery storage are these new uses that uh, you know, confront the town today that we need to update our language and update our code. Um, there's also several zoning districts that are very similar in nature, and uh, but they have different provisions. So it causes a lot of confusion amongst architects and, and engineers. So we're looking to simplify the districts. And um, we're trying to, to figure out how also to help our code enforcement officers in, in town enforce the laws, because if it's easier for everyone to read and interpret, it's easier for them to enforce and have people follow along as well. So we're adding special tools that allow for uh, more flexible mixed use development opportunities, especially on larger parcels along our waterfront. And um, more or less trying to reorganize the law just to make it easier to navigate. And we're also making it uh, more legally defensible in, in many aspects. And the town is currently about a year into, in, into the development of this new zoning law. Um, in 2019, we were awarded a $150,000 grant through NYSERDA as a result of their Clean Energy Communities Grant Program. So NYSERDA had challenged municipalities to complete a number of tasks that reduce our overall carbon footprint, including um, purchasing clean energy vehicles, converting our street lighting to LED, and running a solarized campaign that encouraged residents to install solar panels on their homes, which, which 58 homeowners did. So we, we completed those tasks and were one of the first municipalities in Western New York to achieve the designation of clean energy community. And this being a few years after uh, the Huntley plant did, did shut down. Uh, the town board decided uh, the best use of those funds, the, the $150,000 would be to help rewrite our zoning law to address the town's future development objectives. So every new construction project in town is, is subject to the zoning law and review of the town's planning board. It's their job to ensure that all new projects are in conformance with the code. And at, at the end of the review process, the project is the best it can be for the town regarding layout, design, and improvements. And many times, these project uh, sponsors uh, agree that uh, at the end, end of this process, it, it's beneficial for their, them as well. Um, so we currently have a list of, of, of issues we're working on. There's been several uh, recent state or uh, federal uh, Supreme Court cases that have come down on the side of uh, commercial free speech, which basically uh, allows a business owner, anyone who is putting up a sign to put whatever content in that signable area that they want. In the past, we used to, in a lot of municipal uh, sign laws, be able to regulate content, or at least municipalities would like to try to regulate content. Well, that's all been thrown out the window and, and we need to revisit our sign law and make sure it's um, consistent with, uh, with this new case law. 
We're also providing uh, uh, consistent design guidelines for new projects that are coming in the town. More uh, detailed images in, in the zoning law, be much more uh, graphics uh, in, in the zoning law that are gonna help architects, engineers, and even homeowners figure out, you know, what does this text mean? We're also addressing new things like short-term rentals and, uh, and home occupations. The town currently has a number of own, unzoned parcels, un, unregulated lands, and uh, those will be zoned and mapped along parcel lines as much as par, uh, possible. And we're creating some, some engineering standards that'll be created and uh, reference more in the code. And there will be several map amendments um, uh, that will take place. Uh, and, and mainly it, it will be along the River Road Quarter or Waterfront Mixed Use District. And there is an effort along Niagara Falls Boulevard now to start thinking about transit oriented design for a potential light rail expansion. So we're in the, in the process of, of working out a uh, potential new code revision for that. So we have hired a, uh, a consultant, Barton LeJudas, who's helping us guide uh, a local steering committee um, that uh, the people have basically use the code on a daily basis. And uh, we are seeking input from local stake stakeholders, business owners, residents, and community groups. So um, this, this law does affect everyone that, that uh, interacts with, with the town. Uh, we hope to have a draft ready uh, for public review and input uh, sometime in September and a final draft ready for town board deliberations and adoption sometime toward the end of the year. So this matters to the business community because zoning law is the teeth behind the town's land use vision. So it's, it's where you want to see the community improve. And uh, some of the most better, you know, Best places in our nation are shaped by a partnership of private business uh, interests and governmental administration, local governmental administration, to make things happen. Uh, early plans of, of Buffalo, Chicago, and Washington all followed this, this blueprint. And uh, it's, it's the business organizations that cooperate with government on a plan, utilizing our scarce resources, can make impactful changes in our community. We're just local government trying to get this stuff done, uh, quite frankly, would not work and uh, would backfire for sure. So the vision must be aligned with majority consensus of informed stakeholders. And this is the biggest task of any effort of this type. Um, this uh, is a slide of the uh, former Energy Huntley Power Generating Facility on the river. And I just wanna to touch briefly on one of the, the zoning law amendments that were uh, was recently actually adopted a couple months ago by the town board and, and that is the planned unit development zoning district or PUD for short. This is a tool that can be utilized um, on, on property redevelopment projects of over 20 acres that allows developers a blank slate of what they would like to see happen on the site while at the same time adhering to a number of guiding land use principles for the site. Many of the properties along River Road um, that are currently being cleaned up could utilize this tool in the future. Uh, Tonawanda Coke and, and NRG are two examples of those. Um, this is a, uh, one of the concepts that's been prepared um, by, by a consultant looking at a, a mixed use redevelopment of a portion of that site. And the basic concept behind a PUD is that it'll, it uh, removes uh, the barriers of, of traditional zoning, the setbacks, height restrictions, and even use prohibitions um, uh, are, are completely, it, it allows developers a, a, a canvas. They can basically come up with you know, a project that, that works for them, but it does have to adhere to several overriding principles um, in in uh, the, the PUD, and, and a lot of that comes down to the provision of open space in the design, the preservation of important scenic views uh, to the Niagara River, um, but it, it allows developers to entertain a mix of uses that traditional zoning just, just cannot allow. So it, it is a, a good tool, and uh, with the right project, uh, it, it could uh, be utilized uh, more frequently. 
So this new tool uh, will definitely help that and the uh, revised waterfront mixed use district is going to help guide the town for the next 10 to 15 years. Um, and it, it certainly will be a, a transformation from what was to what can be out there along the river. All right, I'm moving on. This is our uh, third topic of the day here is the um, establishment of a complete streets policy. And along with that, the implementation of bike lanes, ADA compatible sidewalks, nice mass transit options and amenities along our streets to access commercial enterprises without the need for a vehicle. So the, the, the basic concept here, this, this slide shows two different street types. One is considered complete, uh, encouraging various modes of transportation, walking, biking, allows for, for ADA accessible uh, transportation up um, handicap accessible curbs. And the other has just been designed exclusively for vehicles. I mean, um, and this has been the predominant design of our roadways for the last 50 years. We need to realize that 50% of our commuting traffic out of our homes are to destinations that are under uh, three miles away. So if, if you think about that, you know, is there a way you could bike three miles to go get a carton of milk or eggs for the morning breakfast? Or, you know, this could this help with the overall wellness of our community if it can be done safely and effectively? It could reduce carbon emissions and at the same time address the public health crisis of obesity that's occurring in our society and loneliness, especially amongst our senior population. It's about getting people up and moving in our community. It's a quality of life issue. Many people see it as a social justice issue, but I would say it's just about creating uh, places that are safer, more efficient for both vehicles and other modes of transportation. The Complete Street Initiative in our town began soon after the adoption of the last comprehensive plan update. The town had formed a Complete Streets Committee represented by state, county, and town traffic engineers, residents, business owners, bicycling advocates, elected officials, police officers, and yes, uh, planners. We met regularly for approximately a year and a half between 2017 and 2019. And uh, the pandemic and the staff turnover in the town has sort of derailed our efforts this last year, but we will be picking up the pieces and, and moving this forward again. During uh, these formational years, we've developed a complete streets policy that's been adopted by the town board. And we've designed a pilot project along Parker Boulevard um, between Sheridan Drive and Anglewood Avenue. One of the best features in the town and village is the existence of an extensive sidewalk network. We have them on over 80% of our local streets and they do act as a great asset for getting people up and outdoors. And wheelchairs are able to navigate uh, accessible ramps in, in ways where other communities just don't, do not have this asset, this infrastructure in place. So it's a real bonus for the town and we need to preserve and expand on that. It's, it's really an important part of our future to keep investing in, side, in the sidewalk network and keep improving it for ADA accessibility. It keeps us healthier, both physically and socially. So the, the pilot project that's designed for Parker is, is along 1.3 miles of uh, a section of roadway between um, Sheridan Drive, the State Highway, and Anglewood Avenue, which is a county road. Uh, there, there will be two vehicle lanes, two bike lanes, and the project is really more about reprogramming the area between the existing curbs with uh, additional sidewalks, curbing, road paint, and signage. Another part of the, the Complete Streets Initiative is the deployment of mini roundabouts at certain intersections that handle a specific volume of traffic, normally between 3,000 and 15,000 vehicle trips per day. Um, Parker, uh, this Parker project will have three different mini, uh, mini roundabout locations that act as a new intersection control device in town. 
The traffic signal was invented over 100 years ago um, to help vehicles through intersections. But the problem with traffic signals uh, today remains um, in, in some of these less uh, traffic volume areas, uh, residential areas or areas where traffic signals are either ignored or the subject of distracted driving. Motors just fly through the intersections without realizing there was a red light. This leads to thousands of accidents a year, motorist to motorist, motorist to pedestrian. It still remains the number one cause of death amongst young adults. Even after the, this pandemic year, um, it just doesn't make the headlines. Uh, I think it's, you know, it could be a, a news fatigue, apathy, or just in general, the acceptance of our, our, our car culture and just that's the way it is. But it's, it's a public health safety crisis that uh, can be solved. And it's just not politically popular because it means changing the, the way we think about our traffic and our design in our streets. So um, many roundabouts have been proven to be a more effective intersection control. Uh, they force via vehicular movements in a circular direction, eliminating the possibility of a, a team going crash in the intersection due to distracted driving. They also are a more efficient means of moving vehicles through intersections so that you don't have to wait for a green light and have your car sitting and idling, which is not great for the environment. They also work when the power goes out, another great feature of them. So the local police force does not have to send an officer to the intersection to help with traffic. It just works. But there does remain such a political pushback on, on some of these from some people um, that don't wanna see any change at all. Even though those there's statistics out there that prove that when once these are installed, it reduces accidents by over 50% and injury accidents by over 75%. Uh, this particular project on Parker Boulevard is saving the town a, a half a million dollars in uh, cost to replace the traffic signal. Um, and those costs are going up every year. There's about 20 more intersections in town that could utilize uh, this type of traffic. Uh, intersection control. More than 4,000 of these have been built in the US alone. Um, the town was the first in Western New York to deploy a demonstration project of a, of a mini roundabout. Uh, this is probably three years ago now. Um, but the uh, village of Lancaster has actually just recently installed one along Central Avenue. So uh, there is a local example and one you can drive through um, if you're ever out that way. So some of the challenges of this initiative obviously are, are costs. Uh, you know, it is an infrastructure project, they're expensive, but they're also necessary to move our town forward. So it's, you know, we are out there continuing to, to help secure grants from state and federal government for these improvements and the town will continue to invest where it's necessary to ensure these amenities for the future. Oh, and this last slide here is just a, uh, a quick shot of what the proposed LRT, uh, this was, um, created for the NFTA just to show uh, what the Niagara Falls Boulevard could look like in 2030 if it were implemented and showing some of the redevelopment options at the Boulevard Mall site. So um, that's really uh, all, I, all I had for you folks today. I just wanted to, to conclude with, um, you know, it's just persistence, determination are, are all that's needed to help create some of these changes. And um, I always say that if there's anything you'd like to discuss with me, my door is always open in town. My office is uh, located in the Sheridan Parkside Community Center. So you can stop on by, shoot me an email. Also visit the, I encourage you all to visit the town's website uh, to keep informed about what is happening in, in your local government. And uh, that's where we post a lot of our, you know, what's going on and how to get involved type, type of things. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to stop share and uh, turn that back over to you, Kath. And, we can open up for questions. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I have a question and it has to do with the Complete Streets Initiative. And I uh, have been working a lot with, we've got the Kenmore Rotary and there's some other rotaries and we've been talking about the, you know, um, uh, cleanups and biking and all kinds of things as far as just moving around town. And, I feel like we missed an opportunity. It was a county road, but Englewood Avenue. So you've got your whole Parker Boulevard 
with every all of the bike lanes and everything going down. And then of course you've got the um, uh, the or the um, the walking paths, etc. Behind some of those houses are all going to meet right at that same spot on Kenmore Avenue. And then there's no bike lane or not Kenmore Avenue, Englewood Avenue. And then we, even though that was just repaved, it stops. It all just stops right there. And and I was just wondering if that can be revisited or why it got shut down when I thought it was part of the complete street initiative. Yes, great question. This is one of those where, you know, the town board has, they, they do see the benefits of the complete streets policy. It has popular support. Over 80% of our uh, population supports the implementation of a complete streets design along these, these roadways. It, it comes down to, um, it, it just takes a, you know, some, a minority of, of people that are opposed to a project. And in, in this case on Englewood, the question it came down to a parking restriction because they needed to restrict parking, I believe to one side of the street uh, to make this project work. Um, it was uh, doable. We had cooperation from the county um, engineering department that was going to paint in the, the new bike lanes, but the, the restriction needed to be upheld, but it was opposed by a, uh, by a minority of, of, of population and the town board just couldn't support it at a public hearing. It's difficult. Um, you know, it can be revisited in, in the future. Uh, it's one of these, you know, this, this initiative and this policy is something that just you just have to continue to, to implement it where, where it can be. You've got to take your little wins and your little battles and just keep on building a network uh, as much as you can because, you know, the, one of the arguments at, at the public hearing that night is, you know, it's dangerous. You can't have bikes out on the road. Well, if, if you don't have de a bike, you know, dedicated bike lanes that make it easier and safer for people to be in the road, of course, you're not going to see bikers in the road. You, you know, we're, that's, we're trying to get there. So without doing a pilot project, without pushing some of these things forward and in small ways, you'll never get there. So it's, it is about baby steps. It does take so much time to get done, but uh, yes, it can be revisited and we'll continue on that path. Be great. I, I, you know, some people have the opinion that because we're Buffalo and we have winter nine months of the year, that biking is absolutely not a year round you know, something that people could do year round. And I believe that if if more people can travel to different countries, in, in particular, I'm speaking about Sweden, I happen to have a niece and she lives in Stockholm, mm. they're, oh my God, you go there and then you realize they have not only, you know, winters like we do, but it's dark, <laughs> a lot darker. And it's quite heavy with the bike traffic, quite heavy, it's fascinating. Yeah. So it, I think when you go there and then you come back, you realize we could do that. We really could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just, uh, I think that it, that might've been maybe overturned if there was a little more communication possibly. I think that a lot of people didn't realize there was a hearing going on about it or, or and then again, you said a minority of people showed up and, and um, just so communication, I think maybe in the future to, so people know what are we, you know, there's a decision going to be made and um, yeah. and what are the pluses and minuses? Um, you know, there was some original uh, comments from my recollection did have to do with safety. And it, for, again, just back to Englewood Avenue that uh, if you narrowed everything down, what happens when you've got two tractor trailers, you know? So I'm sure that can be answered. I, that was just a question that had Arisen. Yeah, it, it can happen a lot of, you know, when you, when you, when you do narrow the, the traffic lanes, let's say to 10, 10 feet in width, um, and you have the larger width vehicles coming together, um, you do, they will encroach on those bike lane areas at, when they pass, you know, when they, when they go by each other. It's just one of those things where you can only program so much in a road, but like everything else, you just have to be present. It does slow traffic you know, it's the calm traffic, slow traffic. So it, it does, you know, you do have to slow down and be more aware of your surroundings in these complete streets environments, but that is the whole reason for it. And they're proven to be safer routes for everybody. Right, right. It just, that was a tough spot just because there's so many things that came up, 
came together right there and then led the rest of the way on Englewood Avenue to Kenmore Avenue. And then you've got a campus and everything else. And so it just was a little frustrating that that wasn't, uh, didn't go forward. But Agreed. yes, it was frustrating. It's a good word. <laughs> so, but I see Dave Stinner jumping out and I'm sure he has a question. Dave, sure. let's get you unmuted. Oh, you are unmuted. I'm just not hearing you for some reason. No, nope, still can't hear you and I don't know why. Check, check that out, Dave, and we'll take your question as soon as we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes thank you. Okay, good. Uh, are we in that same position now with decisions coming up for Colvin Boulevard? Because I heard the city of Buffalo wanted to do Kenmore Avenue South to Delaware Park. And then of course, through the village and the town is that that's a county road as well so it would be the same process as we just as kathy just described right yeah the, you know they are they did want to look at that i just heard recently that they're backing off they did want to uh, do a joint study uh city and town at colvin colvin boulevard but i did just hear something that they may have uh pulled their uh support for now um, they may revisit in the future but i mean just from living right around the corner, that intersection of, of, of Colvin and Kenmore is just hideous. So certainly it needs some attention. Um, so who initiates that since it's a county road, does the county? The county is, that? the county has to be involved from, from Kenmore um, north uh, through up, up to the, they were gonna look all the way up to the throughway. But the um, it's the city, you know, south of, of Kenmore. So with the town of Tonawanda complete streets code, doesn't that mean that, that the county is supposed to involve the complete streets yeah. ideology when they yeah. repave and 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 re look at major changes? Yes, it is. It's mandatory for the traffic engineers designing these projects to recognize the local municipality hasn't adopted a complete streets plan and consider um, incorporating those features into the design. Um, and it, it has been frustrating to see that some of these projects are just flying, flying through without those considerations. Um, uh, it's, it's also in New York state law, highway law, where uh, anything that's funded through through state taxpayer dollars has to consider uh, the complete streets design. So, um, you know, I, I'm not sure from the local Buffalo uh, regional office here at DOT, why some of these projects are moving forward without elements of complete streets design. So because the city of Buffalo backed off on their side Erie County doesn't want to consider it on the village and town of Tonawanda side? You know, obviously, you know, a joint municipal study would have gone a little better for, for funding. I'm sure we probably would have been able to secure more grants. Obviously, the town can look at it at its, at its own and, and, and move forward on its own. Um, and like I said, that, that intersection alone, I mean, it should be up on the priority list of, of things to be re re redesigned and, and reinstalled. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, the key here is to make sure that we're kept abreast of anything that is, and that, you know, members of the community. Um, yeah, what's your suggestion as far as keeping um, up on, I mean, you said to go, you know, go to the, the website, et cetera, but is there other communication that we should be keeping our eyes open for? You know, the, the town does, uh, you know, our IT department has gotten better at um, social media. There, there is a Facebook page uh, that they do uh, blast. Um, that's another um, um, mode to, to sort of keep in touch and hear what's going on. Um, you know, I dare say, uh, you know, listen in occasionally to a town board meeting or a planning board meeting. Um, you know, it's uh, it, those, you know, without having the, you know, local paper, the Kenton B does a great job covering local news, but you know, who 
there are, uh, you know, other means out there we're, we're trying to exploit, you know, just to get the word out. And it's uh, our IT guys handle that, that part of town government and how to link people to, to what's happening in town. So um, Anthony Matthews is our, our town's webmaster at the town. And uh, any suggestions, please, uh, you know, forward on my way and make sure Anthony gets them. And it's right. a constant ev evolution. I will say I've gone on the town website at, uh, after the, the board meetings and um, the audio doesn't play, but I'll talk to mm -hmm. Anthony about that because I just I've tried a couple of times to listen to maybe how people phrase things, et cetera. And I can't get that to work, but that's, uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know if that's me or them. I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, but I know I interact with it and I'm looking at agendas, looking at planning board meetings um, to see what is going on. Uh, as far as, you know, development, that's something that I'm interested in. And because um, one of these days, somebody's going to buy a big building and turn it into some sort of a conference center and <laughs> we can have a local event in town, in addition to the things that we're doing at Kentown Elmwood Commons, but just a, a, our own conference center would be, would be awesome. And I certainly could see something going on like that out at the Huntley plant or yeah, um, some, some really cool things out there. I've seen, you know, around the world, people um, doing some interesting things with, with that kind of a plant. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, an event center. We still need an event center. <laughs> yeah, we do. But thank you for your time. I think this was very informative and, and you know, just helps people know where to go to get this, this information and just how many things that the town is working on at the same time, trying to, you know, build a better future. I think that, you know, getting everything zoned uh, just once and for all at this point and then getting that uh, language cleaned up is a, is great. That, yeah, that's kind of yeah, it, it will. Uh, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of provisions in there in the, in the commercial zoning districts, you know, that, that regulate outdoor storage of materials. Um, right. You know, there there will be a lot of time for for public review and comment on those those issues. So, like I said, over the next uh, three to four months, you'll be hearing more and more about that and uh, public hearings and uh, meetings regarding that because uh, those issues are you know very testy and uh, you know we'll we'll get those hammered out and before the end of the year for a draft law. That's great. We'll try to share that also. Thank you, Jim Hartz, for sharing with us today. I thought it was very interesting. I think you did a great job and, and, and we appreciate it. And we'll have this up on YouTube and people can watch it forever and ever. <laughs> Sounds good, Kathy. Thank you Is so much great? for the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And thanks for everybody's questions. Appreciate those. And, and then just, I just know the number of the people that are on this call are very interested in the future of this town. And uh, I think everybody's working very well together to uh, make it a, continue to make it a great place to live, work and play. Great. So thanks, Jim. You have a great day. Everybody have a great afternoon. Take Thank care. You. Okay, bye-bye.